collaboration has been um, very, very meaningful in this project. We have a step up team that have been working together, so across the areas of English, business and science. So we're working with our colleagues that perhaps we may not usually sit down with and converse um, around pedagogy and uh, the implementation of different um, strategies. And which was the lovely thing the other day was the girls were saying to me, oh miss, we're actually using this in other subjects because we're running this uh, project through English, uh, through science and through business. So it was lovely to see that they could nearly preempt things that we were going to do with them. Well, I'm lucky in the sense that we already kind of are part of the team teaching, co-teaching model. So I have a, another English teacher in my classroom, which is fantastic. But we were definitely able, through our step up meetings, people kind of got a little bit interested, a little bit nosy, what's going on there. So we were able to talk through other subject areas and just say, listen, it's something that's quite simple. It's something we're doing already, but it's just a more formalised approach. And some colleagues would ask, will you show me how you kind of, you know, uh, embedded that YouTube clip or how you give that feedback online through the students. So it kind of started growing and growing through other subject departments, but also within the English department, it was myself and my colleague, but we've another teacher on board this year. So through our school-wise platform, we were sitting down, we were planning online, and we were bringing in the step up together. When they were putting together their projects, yeah. like for CSP, they were sticking in their science bit, even though they knew I wasn't a science teacher, but they were confident in what they had learned in science, they could check mm. with their science teacher, and I had told them, lads, whatever you learn in any of the different subjects can go into your CSP bit or go into your geography bit or whatever. So it, it, in that sense as well, you could, you could really see how they were uh, engaging with the whole thing. Like we've, we've um, had so much new in the last number of years. I mean, the yeah. whole junior cycle, the school self-evaluation, and it can sometimes, you can be overwhelmed by all of this new stuff and, what, what I think this project helped me to realise, and certainly kind of, you know, reflecting on it, I suppose, between this year and last year, is that, I suppose, the, the principles of the SSE are there to help us deliver the, the, the junior cycle. You know, that though the mm -hmm. tools are there, all those great methodologies, all those um, activities that put the student at the centre... And we know them and we're using them, but sometimes we're not really connecting the dots, you know, that joined up thinking that I think we're yeah. experiencing and the students are experiencing, definitely. Um, so it has been a great way to kind of cement the two, to realise that the SSE is there to help us deliver the junior cycle. Collaboration, I suppose, has been um, a key thing for us in this project and I suppose it's something that we've enjoyed an awful lot because I suppose maybe as a business teacher I mightn't have known what was going on in the English classroom or I mightn't have realised what was going on in the science classroom. We'll, we have and we will have learned so much by then. So it really is a case of over the last uh, 18 months that we have involved a larger number of people in, in, in getting actively involved in, in the project. Um, it will not go anywhere if it's only related or involving a small number of teachers. The challenge of getting the subject departments more involved, we, we, you know, we won't uh, understate that. It is a challenge. There are so many other requirements. And I suppose getting colleagues to acknowledge and realise that this is not an add-on, this is core. And we have succeeded in getting more teachers actively involved and the hope then is that they will see the benefits because there are real benefits and, and that being the case that we would maybe less ambitious projects but certainly this isn't an end to itself. This has created a culture of uh, interdisciplinary planning and uh, cross-curricular collaboration that um, is too rich and too important to finish up when this project finishes. I think the project Step Up had a really positive impact on student learning. Um, you could see their confidence growing um, day by day within the class and it was lovely for us as teachers to push us out of our comfort zone. As English teachers sometimes I tend to do things maybe in a very sort of specific comfortable way and it made me think of more kind of um, exciting ways to deliver my lesson and to use technology within the classroom you know as an active learning methodology to get them moving to get them you know trying things in a slightly different way even in terms of of the format of assessment. Assessment was a little bit different. Sometimes it would be kind of like active projects or group projects and it fed into key skills of junior cycle because they had to work collaboratively. And in terms of my first years moving into second year, in terms of linking it to their classroom-based assessment for English, it was a lovely experience because they were quite comfortable with delivering presentations and then they were able to use the technology to aid that in a seamless manner.
Okay, so I suppose at the most basic level for them, what they've learned is I suppose they gained insight into pedagogy in a particular area that you might not always get an insight into as a teacher. And they got an opportunity to really kind of, you know, play around with methodologies and practice and hone their own skills there. And everything that goes with that, you know, stepping outside of your comfort zone, trying something new, um, you know, recognizing when things are working and recognizing when things aren't and how to either amend it or, you know, knowing when to set it aside and to, you know, start over and start afresh. Um, so that was powerful learning, but especially with that group, what I observed as well was that as time went on and they engaged more with the process, they very much became a genuine community of practice. And you don't often see that. Um, you know, we can we talk about it a lot and we hear a lot about it, but it was very much a genuine community of practice where they did engage in a very honest and frank professional discourse and brought it to bear on their daily teaching practice. And they would have said that themselves, that actually the way they do things on a, from a day-to-day -day basis has changed and that there are certain things now that they would have been would have maybe made them, made them feel uncomfortable in class that that has changed now and they're quite comfortable with it and they're more confidence so I think it has certainly contributed to their efficacy as, as professional teachers um, and as well as that though I think a lead on from the community of practice has also meant that I've seen them certainly grow and develop as leaders and leaders as learning um, in a very true sense. Yeah, I think that as a department, say in the business department, you're singularly focused in that I work within the business department, within my business colleagues and everyone else is doing their own subjects and their own assessments in their own area. This has kind of opened my eyes to, it's not really about the content of the subject. It's more about the teaching and learning methodologies that we can share across the different subjects and that we can use. So breaking down the features of quality, um, co-creating success criteria, feedback strategy, parental involvement, all of that is generic to everybody. It has to be adapted in different ways, but in general, it's generic. And I suppose for me, that was something. So now I'm talking to the English teacher just in there now about how she did her co-creation of her success criteria. And same with the science because it's not about the content it's just about the process of doing it.